Good morning. Welcome to everyone that's here. Welcome to those on YouTube, on Facebook, to my right, to my left. We're glad you're here. We're starting a new mimer, Parshas Vayeshev, in Teda Ur, it's page 52, which, as we titled the class, The Investment of Your Soul. The journey that we go on has a lot of meaning to it, and we'll hear it from the one of the earlier works of Hasidus. The Pasuk tells us, And this Parsha, Yaakov settles, and that's the name of the Parsha, Vayeshev, in the land where his father lived, in Eretz Kenan, the land of Kenan. And you see here, it says twice Eretz, in the land, and then again in the land, in the same Pasuk, which is unusual. We need to understand in Yinzeh, this idea, Gam, Also, what does this mean? First of all, this concept of he settled in the land, that's number one. And number two, why do you say twice, Be'eretz, Migure Aviv, and then again, Be'eretz Kenan, in the land where his father lived, in the land of Kenan? Why repeat yourself? So to understand this, he makes it, the verse tells us, in Tehillim, as Halich Lechne Hashem, Ba'ard Seis Hachayim. I'm going to go in front of Hashem, in the lands, plural, of life. So clearly there are two two lands. There's two lands. Which are two levels. Two types of Kalim. To bring forth the supernal light. So when David HaMalach says, I'm going to go, or I go in front of Hashem, and the lands, it represents two types of lands of life. Chayim is also plural. You could say Chai. Chai means, means more than one. We need to understand this. We need to understand. Why do we refer to Eretz Yisrael? The whole Terah Eretz Kanan. It's true, they lived there before, but who are we fooling? It's our land. Chom is the father of Kanan. Chom is one of the sons of Noyach. He had three sons, Shem, Chom, and Yafas. And Chom was not exactly the role model that we want to um, copy. He's the one that um, was very immodest with his father when his father was intoxicated. Um, he misbehaved and he was cursed. So Cham is the father of Canaan. What's this lineage and this praise? You know, it's the land of Canaan. It come from Cham. What's the Shevach? That it's from Canaan, which is Cham. There's another reference that says Canaan in his hand, he has scales of fooling or of trickery. Again, you see that the term Canaan is connected with something less than desirable. So why does he say Yaakov settled in Canaan? And the whole Torah talks about Eretz Yisrael. You never say Eretz Yisrael. It's always Canaan, Canaan, Canaan. Why this emphasis? Gam of another verse, another pasuk, which also brings out this uh, seemingly wonder. But the year Canaani eid beveis Hashem tzvakes by Yimahu. It'll come that day. There won't be any more even one Canaani in the house of Hashem. So one of the Prophecies of the greatness that we're anticipating when Sheikh will come is there won't be any Knani there. Okay, so Knani obviously is a negative thing. The whole Torah is derived, we learn, in a um, contrasting way. There's good and then there's the opposite. There's the positive, there's the negative, light and dark, and so on. Just like we learned last week, yesterday, that you have love on an ace of in Klippa. Right, love when we said is a terrible thing, and he's tricking Yaakov, and Esav is is the other side, and so on. The chain Sarah Tabachim was Sarah Mashkim, and similarly, the minister when in, in when Esav is going to be in jail, you have the minister of the the, the butler, the, the minister of of the what's it called? not the agriculture, but all the meat butcher. Butcher, thank you, that's such a great word. <laughs> and the butler. Similarly, we have all these levels in Kedusha. You have these terrible people, so to speak, but you also have some level that represents in holiness. Because everything that Hashem created, He created a counterpart to it. In good, there's a counterpart in bad, and therefore if you see something negative, there is an opposite, which is good. So let's understand Noyach, uh, Cham, which we said was a bad person, or cursed person. The three sons of Noyach, the three sons of Nayach in heaven, 
meaning in the spiritual state, they represent uh, the three colors of the rainbow, which are Chiver, Sumuk, and Yarek. Uh, white, red, and green. Is white one of the colors of the rainbow? Okay. Um, there's obviously more than three, but these, I guess, are the three main colors. Um, so the three levels of Mayach represent, three sounds of Mayach represent the three colors of, um, which in Kedusha are three levels, three colors of the rainbow. Ella. So what happened? What went wrong? If it's so holy, because we know that the world goes in a chain process, um, in a degrading, descending process, so it fell from level to level. And by the time it gets gets down here, now you have Chom, a material Chom, who's the father of Kinan, which is negative for all the above-mentioned reasons and quotes. But really it stemmed and started from something very positive. To understand what's Kinan in the holy state, which could have been that way, in a Kinan Pirushe Seicher. The meaning of Kinan means a merchant. When Shekas of Kinan Nechbadei Aretz. This Pasuk shows us that the word Kinan we also mentioned before that Kanan has in his hand scales of trickery or of uh, dishonesty. It's the idea of scales, it's also merchant. He's selling, he's buying, that's what, that's what Kanan represents. For example, like a merchant, he's going to spread money, meaning scatter. Kesef, Vizav, silver and gold. He's letting them out of his domain. He's giving them away. They, excuse me, are viach uli his stacker to benefit and to to um, earn more. The chol ikir kavanasu is the father of nesef eid. What's the point of earnings? I can give even more. Typical merchant is going to go and invest. He's going to buy product at a marketplace and sell it at a profit. But in that spread, he's parting with his money. The whole point is to earn more, and then he's going to go and take that money that he earned more, and again spread it out, scatter it, give it away in order to get more. So there's this constant, um, the, the idea of a merchant represents parting with your stuff in order to get more, to part with it again. Similarly, the source, the root of the Neshama of the Yid, which is known as Knesset Yisrael, is compared in Golos to a merchant. We're, in a, we're on business. We're in this um, exiled world. It says your brother, which means Yaakov, came with wisdom, which also implies trickery or not the straight way, and he took your blessing. That's what we're on a, we're on a mission here, not to, to lie and steal, God forbid, but to get stuff that a little bit harder to attain. And that's Golos. Yaakov have to do it. We all have to do it. Now, how do you do it? He's going to explain. It says, The time that a person controlled over the other, meaning ruled over him, to uh, damage him, to do bad for him. Which means golos. Through the fact that the shechina in golos went into them, meaning the worlds that were in, to give in them. Through this, you refine all the sparks of Kedusha, which is a constant idea we talk about a lot in Tera Er, that life, especially in Golos, is to bring out sparks. Every place that we end up in and every um, act that we have and stage that we're of our journey, we're accomplishing something. We're, we're elevating, we're picking up, we're, we're retrieving these sparks. Kamesh Amr Razal, Yisrael our sages tell us the only reason why they didn't end up in Golos is to increase upon them converts. But it doesn't just mean converts. It means in general, the fact that you went, there were no Jews living in America. Right? The earliest, I think, is in the 1600s. Very few, the end of the 1600s. Um, but by going there, there's now sparks here that no one elevated and no one accessed. But they're holy. And by, by Jews going there, which we only go there because of Golos, we we're able to elevate them through serving Hashem there, through the various methods of doing so. The simple meaning of, of the saying of Chazal, of our sages, is that we meet people and eventually they convert, or some of them convert. So you're bringing more people under the wings of the Shekhinah. 
Lies bila hamavas, and when you get rid of all negativity, which means you elevate any potential spark, you swallow up death. There's no more death in the world. The spirit of impurity I'll take away from the land. And the, the glory of Hashem will be revealed. I with I with I will see. In other words, the, the physical eye will be able to see godliness. The concept is we go into this world with a purpose to retrieve, to gain that 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 earning, that profit, which are those sparks that we don't have yet. Just like it's in the general world, this is one of the favorite concepts. Just like you learn in the world as a whole, you have this like purpose and mission. Within ourselves, we also have on a miniature level the same idea. In ourselves, we have sparks that through the process of digging into ourselves and becoming more in tune and, and growing as a person, we're also elevating sparks that we have. It's not just some global project. The soul, Ted, before it came down in this world, the slabish beguf, the nefesh achiyunis, to go and clothe itself into a soul. And Abahamas into the animal soul, in the body, the neshama before it came down, where was it? It was bound and united with its creator, which is Hashem. The Rishvei Esha Ava, with a flaming fire of love for Hashem. Teva naturally, like a flame which goes up on its own. You don't have to like beg the flame, come, come, come to the fire. The nature of fire is that it goes upwards. The neshama is in such a state where there's no struggle. It just wants Hashem. That's its whole existence, and it's appreciating it. And it had a, a, a natural love and awe of Hashem. The Gilu Rav, with tremendous revelation, which is the idea of silver, and of gold. So we'll explain in a second what silver and gold means here. But the concept is that you have a neshama in a situation before it comes down to this world that has spiritual bliss naturally. It just it loves Hashem and it's all about connecting more and so on. And the metaphor of gold and silver represents kesef malshin nichsef nichsafta. Kesef silver is from the same word as I, I, I desired strongly. It's a very, very deep expression of desire. Not just I'm doing it, but I have a strong love for Hashem. That's all I want. Which means love. So, so silver is love. The Zav, Mitzaf and Yasa. Zav comes from the north, which is the idea of um small the left, Shibhinas Yira, which is the um the idea of fear. Oh. How is north left? When you face Mizrach, your left is north. When you face east, but afterwards, the soul was in this great state. It was connecting to Hashem, loving and, and having offer Hashem. And then it comes down to this world to go into a guf hagashmi, a physical body. Even the love and the fear that it had, which obviously was a major part of its existence, all of a sudden it's concealed, it's hidden, it's not active. It's a major, major downer for the neshama. You just like plunged and pull it away from everything that it holds dear. And now not only pull it away, it can't access it, it could, but it's very hard. Even the feelings are dormant. I can't see in the love and the yira in a revelation so much like before. So basically, the Abba and the yira have now lost their value. You know, if someone has love and they could express it, even if they can't express it, in other words, they can't quench it, but they, they feel it, it's amazing. But if you take, you throw this person away and they get numb a little bit to it, so you're losing the value and the, the quality, the, the value really of the Ava and Yira. And this is what happened when the Neshama came down to this world. What's the point of doing that? Take a Neshama was having a very great spiritual experience, which is a good thing, and you just rip it away. In Cain, if so, Lama Zayyarda Neshama Elam Haza, why did the soul come down into this world? It's a tremendous um, minus. And descent from where it was before. What's the point of it? Okay, this is a, obviously a, a 
um, a famous question, a question that's asked throughout the Siddhas. It's one of those questions that if you go to sleep um, without an answer, it's, it's okay. It could bother us. There's a dot over here. Um, why did the neshama come down? That just the question itself is the fact that a person cares that the neshama had Ava and Yira for Hashem and now it doesn't is already, that's already a lesson on its own. The Pasuk says, Your, um, the title of your mouth, which means God's Torah, is better for me than thousands of gold and silver. Okay. Now, we just said that gold is, is love and, and, and silver is a fear. So, Torah is better than all that. Alfei Loshin Limud. Silver is love and gold is free. Yeah, yeah. Silver is love and gold is free. Thank you. Now, alfei means thousands, but alfei also means learning in Aramaic. So, alfei lashen limud. Alfei is from the lashen of learning. Kilemar, meaning, sheyeshli yisrei nu maila, v'seyda spicha v'elam haza, yeisem v'chena zav v'kesem v'shasham v'amudha v'hamud v'chila. It means there's some kind of benefit in great, greater level when I learned Torah in this world over the gold and silver that the Neshama was accustomed to, which means that those emotions to Hashem um, in Gan Eden, which is a big chiddush, it's, it's a big uh, novelty to say that. The Neshama was in a very spiritual state. Connected Hashem, we used expressions like fiery flame, natural, love, fear, all that. And then you say, coming into this physical world where you don't have it anymore, but you have it, but it's very hidden, and you're learning Torah with your, our mind is sometimes somewhere else and you really find time to do it and so on. That's greater to me, to the Neshama, than all those stuff. How's how it possible? Well, okay. the idea is, so the idea is, we know from our sages that there's a saying, um, one moment of tshuva and mice and Tevim in this world is greater than all of um, the life in the world to come, which is a little bit uh, downer because you're telling the person that all of your rewards don't come close to the actions that earn them. So the, the deeds are greater than the rewards. What's, what does it mean? Because through a tshuva, a higher level of tshuva, which means returning to Hashem, connecting to Hashem from the depths of our heart. The connection to of the soul with with, with Hashem will be much more wondrous. As we'll explain further at length. But the idea is like this: you have two types of connections to Hashem. I have a connection where I'm in Shemayim, and I have this fiery love and, and awe for Hashem, and it's, it's an amazing spiritual experience, and it's good, and it's called pleasure. But then you have Shuva Law, where the Neshama is connecting to Hashem. It's a much deeper connection. Um, the words he uses, it's desire of the heart, and therefore it's much, much deeper. Like we talk about distance and returning, but for now, it's a much deeper relationship. Vinimtza comes out. Even though it has some kind of decrease and a loss in the natural love and fear which are in the external part of the heart, which is are revealed. In other words, ask the Neshama, are you interested in God or not? And it doesn't seem like the person is very interested. Unless it's going to have some kind of a greater benefit with a desire of the heart, with the Nukuda of the internal part of the heart, like the benefit of light which comes from darkness specifically. So it's that concept, famous concept, that because you don't have it naturally anymore, and you have to work on it to get the neshama to feel, to want, to develop a taste. Even when we don't want, we do it. That's much more uh, valuable. And um, it's like light that comes from darkness, which is a much greater light. Uh, it's a higher quality, and it's better and more appreciated. So the relationship of the neshama with Hashem to um, in after being in Golis in this world is much greater than it is on its own when it's just in Shalai, which is what we mentioned before, the idea of a merchant, right? He gives away something, which means he takes a loss, 
in order to get a benefit. Loss means giving away, loss may mean, may, may mean a risk. Whatever the person is, is parting with their stuff, um, it's bringing that out. And the Shama also, by coming down into this world, we have the opportunity to do Tshuva law, which gives us a greater connection. To understand this, it says, I need Rishay, I need I'm the first and I'm the last. Hashem says, of course, I'm the first one. I think it's before me. I'm the last one. And besides me, or other than me, there's no God. There's nobody else. It says also, I am Hashem. I don't change. Meaning, nothing that goes on in this world has an impact that modifies me. And you are the one, we say in Davening, before you created the world. And you're the one afterwards. Meaning, nothing happened, nothing changed in you. Without any change. The creations of the world, the higher worlds, the lower worlds, don't take up any place at all. The kula kamek lachashiv mamish. Regular person, you have an accomplishment, whether it's a degree or it's a uh, building of something or whatever it may be, it changes the person. The process changes the person, and the feeling of wow, the person grows, or the opposite as a result of it. By Hashem, even though the world that He created, the, the universe is, is tremendous, um, the vastness of it and the details and so on and so forth. But Hashem is Hashem. It doesn't get changed. It doesn't get impacted. It doesn't, it doesn't excite him. When we bell, I'll die without me, instead, um, other than me, Pirush, Mashu, Zulas, the Chinazu, anything that's out of this level, the Hain of Amtsayis has man, which means through using the, the, the medium of time, Shanira Ha'ilam, the Yesh, the Dabar, the that the world now looks like it's a Yesh and something on its own. Chinazmanu Mokim, time and place. Ain Alekim Zulasi. There's no God besides me. As the, as the saying is, aside from you, we don't have any, any king that, that redeems. Which means, again, that a person that, that a person changes, but Hashem doesn't change. All the worlds, the higher worlds, which are, which are spiritual mm-hmm. worlds, and the lower worlds, which are physical worlds, came about from the Hashem's royalty. As it says, Bisham and over there, all of us and over there came up all of the, the grasping of all the creations, the higher and the lower. From that, but in Hashem, in his glory and in his essence, less machshavat visa, no mind can grasp him. Kiram Venisa, he's higher, lofty, and, and elevated. We get it has from the ability to grasp. But in a nitras betech almond, he doesn't get uh, Captured in worlds, not in a level of a Mali or Seviv. Okay, what it means is like this Hashem doesn't change. And even while a world is being created, which means you're taking levels of godliness and bringing them down to a state that you could have the ability to have the steps necessary to create a spiritual world, worlds, which will lead to a physical world. And in that process, you have two types of spirituality. You have Seviv and Mali. Loosely, Seviv is, is the type of projecting light, which can't go into a um, creation in a detailed way and, and internalize. Mali is the returning light. And what? Well, Mali is the returning light. Chazer is the returning light. Mali is more of the internalized. Mm-hmm. There's a mime where the Altarebbe brings a, a, an example of the Neshama gives energy to the body. There's two types of energy. There's like, like a savior of energy, where the whole body is alive. And it doesn't differentiate if it's an eye that has to have the ability to see, or it's a finger that feels. It's just life. There's no difference. Then there's a mammali level that it says, okay, the, the eye has to have the quality and the type of energy that it could, you know, of eyesight. Um, the finger needs a different type of energy. So it, it gets into details. Now, if you if you analyze both of these things, so the first level, it's so powerful it enlivens, but it can't get into details because I'm beyond details. It doesn't matter to me. It's the eye, you know, just life is life. The male is a is a lower level of spirituality because of godliness because it has the ability to get into details, which means it can limit itself to an eye, to a finger, 
Now, sometimes it's flipped. So sometimes we bring out that seva is, is greater because it can't go into details. And sometimes we say that it's it's lesser because it doesn't go into details. It just like mm-hmm. shoots from above. But Hashem doesn't enclose himself, doesn't get affected by seva and mali. All these, there's a lot of amazing things that are going on in creation, even from a spiritual standpoint. And Hashem is unchangeable. His essence is his essence. A lot of things are happening, but it doesn't, and he's making that happen. It doesn't change. Um, the only way that you could connect to Hashem is through desire of the heart, from the depths of a person and, and, and the, the depths of their heart. That's basically the way a Yid gets Hashem. His point is that through Truva law, to the higher level of Truva, which is only possible when you come into this world. You connect to Hashem, which is a deeper relationship than Seviv and Amalid and all these big things that are going on, which the Neshama has access to higher than that before it comes down, right? It's, it's a, a flaming fire connected to Hashem, love, fear. It's all beautiful stuff. It's not, we're not minimizing it. You can't compare it to coming into this world and then the heart and the connect to Hashem in that, that way. So, Shukasav, as it says, from the depths, I call out to you, Hashem. The desire of the heart comes from this is itself. If you pay attention to it, how do you get this desire of the heart? When you realize, it's not just realization, it's it's, it's contemplation, it's reflection, it's focus on these ten lines that we said. That Hashem is beyond all this. It doesn't change. He's the first. He's the last. And he's not even saved. He's not even Mali. All these things, a person realizes um, Hashem is exalted and above all these things infinitely. Even higher than Chachma when he realizes that how great Hashem is, his soul will become will yearn and really become consumed. to become nullified to him. We must to go out of the confinement of the body. Nartika, which is its, its shell, will be beyond to spill out into the basm of her father, meaning the desire to be with Hashem. And you only have that when you're in this world, because there's a distance. But the soul before it came down to encode in the body. Then the love and the, the bond in its root was based on how much it grasps, whatever you get. Whatever level you're at, that's all you, you know, whoever you are, you you understand, you got it. And the same applies for fear. In other words, there's two types of relationship with Hashem. There's grasping, achieving, and then there's the soul yearning. In Shemayim, it's not the soul yearning. It's a desire, but it comes from um, achieving realization. In this world, we think and think and think and contemplate the greatness of Hashem. That we want it even more, and that heart, that that, that depth um, feeling, is the relationship, and that's much much greater. So when Shabbat comes down, gives up all, or taken away from him all that stuff, in order to be able potentially to achieve that that benefit, like a merchant, which is the idea of Han Acham, which that's the we'll continue tomorrow. Thanks for joining, person online, share, like, subscribe. See you soon.